Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to Circling Shell Sports on Converge Media. I am your original host, as always, Charles Hamaker. Uh, last week, we did have Omari, or perhaps a little low to some of you. Uh, Omari's back in Chicago, uh, back at school, so he won't be here with us this week. But we do have somebody else here. Uh, this is their first run on the show, uh, essentially like a, a trial by fire here, kind of throwing him into the, uh, throwing him right into it. This is Bell. And uh, I will let Bell introduce himself. Hello, everyone. So just as Chuck said, I'm Bell. I'm happy to be here with you today, Chuck. Um, not too much to tell, but I love sports, and I'm glad to be able to talk about them today. So we've been sort of playing with the idea of uh, looking into a co-host for a while now. Uh, Big O kind of teased it, and we're going to look into it, see how it goes today. Uh, with our standard show as always. I mean, we're not going to change anything. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. Um, and we'll start as always with our Seattle Seahawks here who took on the Arizona Cardinals in the uh, regular season finale, week 18. Still don't like saying week 18. Um, against the Arizona, Arizona Cardinals, pardon me. Winning that game 38-30, to 30, spoiling the Cardinals' chance at an NFC West title behind big rushing game by Rashad Penny. Uh, good, consistent game by... Tyler Lockett to the air, who seems to always have good games in State Farm Stadium. Uh, great way to finish out the season. Obviously, you know, as I've said several times throughout the year, sort of a, a head banging against the wall sort of year. Just so many frustrations, uh, losing so many games due to close. I mean, one score games, always tough. Usually games that you could trust this team to win some way or the other, right? Uh, just didn't go that way this year. But to, to play spoiler to anybody in the division is always fun, especially Arizona. Um, it kind of lost my my hatred for San Francisco just because they, <laughs> I mean, we were, we've only lost like three games with them since Russell's been drafted. Um, and Arizona, you know, they've been they've been a solid team. They've had their struggles throughout the year, but they're they're still a playoff team. So um, ultimately, uh, the offense kind of stalled out. I don't know how you saw it as much, but I mean, for the most part, uh, in the early half, it looked like they kind of struggled. Um, until Rashad Penny got really going. That was kind of something I wanted to see. Okay, it's what, second play from scrimmage. Chandler Jones comes around the edge, smacks the ball in Russell's hand, and Arizona's got a touchdown. We're kind of in trouble here. Um, and I was like, okay, you've got a rush, right? And what do we do usually when you're dealing with a pass rush that's good, which tends to be a lot of pass rushes against us, uh, which should hopefully be to get some sort of run game going, right? Right. Rashad Penny ends up with 190 yards on the ground. Uh, Tyler Lockett has a great game, two touchdowns. Uh, offensive line had its struggles, I'm, I'd say, but they, they kind of got going throughout the day. So what did you see on offense, on the offense side of the ball? I really liked Russell Wilson targeting Tyler Lockett. That was something that I kind of missed throughout, throughout the season. Um, I, didn't, I don't feel like I saw it as much as we normally do. And so to see him throw the long balls and get to Tyler Lockett, that was a good thing to see. Yeah, I mean – he had, he's had some like great games. I think he had a really big game against Indianapolis the first week, but then there's some games where he just disappeared. Right. Um, and whether that be by way of playing with a Geno Smith, and there's no discredit on Geno, but it's, you know, Russell Wilson, Geno Smith, two different planets, right? Oh, yeah. Um, or it's just like the way the offense has been just inconsistently. Uh, yeah. I mean, there have been times where, Tyler Lockett kind of non-existent, and that's not his own fault. I mean, Tyler has been one of the most underrated receivers in the league for a while, and I feel like you say he's most underrated. It kind of takes that effect away from him. But, yeah, I think that's, you know, when at least I looked at it in the, in the offseason leading up to the year, it look, you look at the potential of Tyler Lockett, DK Metcalf, you know, maybe a healthy Chris Carson, obviously, with, you know, our lovely issues at running back in terms of health. Uh, you signed Gerald Everett, you know, you got Russell Wilson. You think about that and you think about this idea of a Rams offense with Shane Waldron, you're like, you kind of salivate a little bit. And we only got kind of bits and tastes of that, you know, kind of in the win against Indianapolis, some stuff with Detroit, but Detroit, it's Detroit, <laughs> and then Arizona, right? So you kind of get some tastes uh, and you think about it, but you hope that would have been sustained through a whole season. Um, so, yeah, that's, I always like getting Tyler Lockett involved. Uh, I, We'll never get sick of that. Defensively, uh, Kyler Murray did not have as bit of, big of a game as perhaps he needed to, and I think that you can credit the defense for that. Obviously, you look at the score, you give up 20, uh, 30 points. Um, 
But Jordan Brooks had a big day, 20 tackles, sets the franchise record for tackles in a season. Secondary, losing, you know, you're not Jamal Adams, you're out some starting corners. Uh, and then eventually later in the game, you lose Quandre Diggs to an injury, and we'll get to that in injury news. Uh, but, you know, playing with all those guys and some guys on the practice squad, you played relatively well. I mean, A.J. Green beat you a couple times, but A.J. Green is A.J. Green. Uh, so I thought the defense, they played all right. Um, could have been better. I know some uh, some of those points came from defensive turnovers. Yeah, the Seahawks had, what, three turnovers? I threw two, three turnovers, and the Arizona converted on all of those. So uh, defense, I think they did their job for the most part. What did you see? You know, you look at Quandre Diggs, you lose him, but Jordan Brooks, without Bobby Wagner, you know, 20 tackle game, that's huge. I agree with you. I think it was a very good defensive effort. I think I saw Kyler Murray on third down more times than I thought I would. Um, it seemed like I glanced up and it would, they were at third again and sometimes completed and other times didn't. So I think they did a good job of keeping that pressure there. Yeah, and that's that's a good point is bringing up third down because you get third long and with a guy like Kyler Murray, you do kind of have to worry about the scramble factor, but uh, third and long, you can only do so much, and eventually teams will wisen up to that. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, a guy who was a MVP candidate earlier in the season, and they've had their own issues there, but I, I think he did a good job there, especially with the threat that he's got uh, and the talent they've got. With James Conner, had a two-touchdown day, but was held to like 30 yards on the ground. So uh, as we speak about stats, we'll get over to stat leaders here. Uh, Russell Wilson, in his normal spot, completed 15 of his 26 attempts for 238, uh, in yards, three touchdowns on the one pick. Uh, Russell Wilson joins Peyton Manning as the only players with at least 3,000 yards and 20 touchdowns in each of their first 10 seasons. And in the other record that was broken, Russell surpassed Manning uh, for most wins by a quarterback in his first 10 seasons. Uh, on the ground, Rashad Penny, uh, 23 carries for 190 yards, one touchdown. It's just kind of insane to me that I've been numb to the numbers. Uh, I believe that Penny joined Sean Alexander as the only running back to have three consecutive games of 130 plus yards. Sean Alexander's not bad company. Uh, and you don't have the same offensive line that he did. So, I mean, you look at Sean Alexander's line, you look at Walter Jones and Steve Hutchinson, two Hall of Famers on one side. It's insane to think about. Rashad Penny's doing it with guys that I wouldn't, I don't want to discredit them, but I wouldn't say that they're Hall of Famers. So it's kind of uh, insane to look at. Um, so that it's, it's, uh, it's weird. It's a weird thing to say, Hey, he's got 190 yards and not think twice about, it. um, continuing with stats here, Tyler Lockett, as we mentioned, five receptions, 98 yards and two touchdowns, uh, tackle department, as we mentioned as well, Jordan Brooks, 20 total tackles, 14 of them being solo, two tackles for loss and turnovers. Uh, Cody Thompson, uh, recovered a fumble on a muff punt, um, so turnover is still good to see that, but would like more. Uh, but can't complain as we're at the end of the year here. Uh, so offensive and defensive MVPs. This is the first time I'm doing it with somebody that isn't one of the original few from the podcast. Uh, offensive side of the ball. I give it to Rashad Penny. I mean, 190 yards, it's hard to discredit that. Russell Wilson, three touchdowns and a rushing touchdown. That's solid. Um, but the one interception kind of mars it. 238, I think Rashad Penny was kind of, the again, been the driving force today. Uh, what do we think? I completely agree with you. I think Rash Rashad Penny was a good surprise towards the end of the season. And coming back, Carson coming back, um, I hope doesn't affect his touches too much because it'd be nice to see that duo out there. That is something that I think we'll have to look at for season recap next week. Uh, it's definitely something that... Um, it's going to have to be a drill. I mean, let alone, you know, I mean, you want to look at that as a duo, right? But with Penny as an unrestricted free agent right now, we got to deal with that first. And I know that in a uh, post-game press conference, Penny mentioned that he would like to stay here. He called it home. But it's, I mean, you can only do so much when a bigger contract is offered to somebody. Um, and I'll admit it. I've admitted it several times over the past few weeks when he's had great games. I was a critic of Rashad Penny over his time on his rookie contract. I think some of that is warranted, but also, you know, you never really know when people can turn it around. And I think I talked to uh, O about it. I said, hey, what if he just turns it around at the end <laughs> of his contract? 
And having that support from Adrian Peterson isn't yeah. bad either. Yeah, so. that, uh, and I think Pete Carroll spoke to, I think the media spoke to Adrian Peterson about it, you know, wanting to play more. And he said, it's been great in the organization. Uh, and Rashad Penny hasn't been shy to come and talk to him for advice. So you got to wonder about it. Obviously, you know, in the sports world, we have to look at off the field things. Uh, Peterson's had some stuff in the past. Um, you know, I don't think that scandal's new to anybody that follows football. Uh, but you also have to look, I, I, I don't know if you, you know, quantify second chances, right? Um, but if we're just looking at it solely from the Seahawks point of view, I think he brings intense value. Uh, obviously, like you talk about Rashad Penny, um, does he want to stop playing? Does he want to start coaching? That is kind of up to see, and that's this kind of things we'll have to follow through the uh, offseason here. Uh, the defensive side of the ball, I think it was kind of an easy pick. I looked at Jordan Brooks, 20 total tackles, 14 of them being solo, two tackles for loss. Brooks has been somebody that I was a little bit quizzical of when they drafted him so high. Uh, I was a Patrick Queen fan, so taking him before Queen was something I was curious about. Um, but I think, I mean, second year and to set the franchise record in tackles, I believe being second in the league, second or third in the league in total tackles, that's a big deal. Um, so on the defensive side of the ball, do you have anything different than a Jordan Brooks? I don't. Um, my heart and just a speedy recovery for Quandre Diggs on the defensive end. Um, yep. It's never good to see injuries out on the field. And so um, it, not a game that you want to lose a guy to. So No. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Last week of the season and especially that stadium and all the things that have yeah. happened in that stadium. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, losing Cam Chancellor, neck injury in that stadium, Earl Thomas in his infamous middle finger in that stadium, uh, Richard Sherman, ACL injury in that stadium, and Quandre Diggs. The only good thing about I don't like saying there's a good thing about an injury, is that there was no ligament damage. So right. it's a clean break, um, and he should be back practicing on a field in about four months. So that's, that's the only good thing about it, no ligament damage, uh, which is kind of a perfect segue to injury news, which, again, is never – a fun segment. Um, on Tuesday, the 4th of January, Alex Collins was placed on injured reserve with an abdomen injury, which is ending his season. Uh, I mean, there's only one week in the season left. On January the 7th, on Friday, Bobby Wagner was ruled out of the season finale. His sprained knee, just the swelling never went down. He uh, misses his first game since 2018. Uh, others that were ruled out for week 18 against the Cardinals includes right tackle Brandon Schell, who dealt with a shoulder injury as well as a stint on the COVID-19 list. Uh, he missed the final five games of the year, so you kind of got to wonder. I believe Shell uh, might have been on the second year of his deal. If you can't stay healthy and you're only on a short deal, do you look at bringing him back? Uh, and especially on an offensive line that struggled, do you look to upgrade at that right tackle position? Uh, cornerback John Reed also missed that game with a concussion. Uh, Will Disley, Gabe Jackson, and Carlos Dunlap were all, were all questionable against the Cardinals. Um, on Saturday the 8th, prior to the game against the, uh, the Cardinals, pardon me, Brandon Shell was placed on injured reserve. I know it's the last week of the season. All that does was open up a, a roster spot for tight end Tyler Mabry off the practice squad. Um, so we get to game day inactives. Quarterback Jacob Beeson out. Going to a guy that's kind of been the third quarterback, especially with COVID hanging around. Uh, offensive guard Gabe Jackson, tight end Will Disley, linebacker Bobby Wagner, and cornerback John Reed, all game day inactives. And then post game, as Bell mentioned, uh, Quandre Diggs breaks his right fibula. He dislocated his right ankle as well. Um, and like we mentioned, you know, clean break, no ligament damage should be good. But obviously, I mean, I'm sure you saw it during the game. I mean, just tears going down his face. His teammates were pissed off. It just kind of tells you about the value that he brings, not only as a player, obviously a pro bowler, probably the best, easily I'd say the best uh, defensive back this year. Um, but to show what he means to that locker room is a big deal. And I know that his contract's up, but mm -hmm. I would pay him what he wants. Uh, and then kind of something I didn't see, wide receiver to DK Metcalf may need offseason surgery for bone spurs in his foot. That's going to depend on the team. They're looking at their options right now, may need surgery. So we'll get back to you if he needs that. Uh, but at the moment, should be fine. Um, he played through it, though, which is, geez, you know, <laughs> bone spurs, little broken bones in the foot. Not good. Uh, Wednesday, the 5th. Uh, we look into team notes here. Rashad Penny was nominated and earned the NFC Player of the Week honors on the offensive side of the ball for his 170-yard performance against the Lions. Will he win it again this week? I wouldn't bet against it. Uh, also on the fifth, Russell Wilson wins the Bart Starr Award. The Bart Starr Award 
uh, is an award given annually to the player who best exemplifies outstanding character and leadership in the home, on the field, and in the community. Wilson joins Hall of Famer wide Hall of Famer Steve Largent, who was the first winner of the Bart Starr Award, and quarterback Trent Dilfer as the only Seahawks to win the player voted award. And now we have to get back to the Russell Wilson sort of drama. January 6th, Russell Wilson states that his goal is to win more Super Bowls, and he plans to do it in Seattle. Again, I know that I've been on the route of I'm taking what is actually factual and what has actually been said. That only helps my case here. Uh, January 7th, DK Metcalf states that he is not trying to leave and would like a contract extension from the Seahawks. Uh, DK's final year on his contract is after the next season. And Sunday, January 10th, the 2022 opponents for Seattle were finalized as the uh, season ended and all the standings went final. Obviously, you play the NFC West opponents in home, included by the Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Denver Broncos, Oakland Raiders, and both New York teams and the Jets and the Giants. And then on the road, obviously, again, your NFC West opponents. And then the New Orleans Saints, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Kansas City Chiefs, LA Chargers, and Detroit Lions. Not a fun away slate. I'm assuming that Tom Brady's still going to be with the Bucs just because he just kind of sticks around. Uh, and then you look at the Chiefs, and the Chargers are a good team too. I mean, you look at Justin Herbert. I know their season ended last night, but them, Tampa Bay, Kansas City, L.A., not going to be fun. And it's never fun either going into the, the Super Bowl, Superdome in New Orleans. I mean, I don't know when the last time we won down there was. So it's going to be a tough year. Um, but it all depends on the offseason uh, in regards to how we do. And then uh, today, earlier in the day, Pete Carroll states that I'm in great shape and that he's not worried about his current job safety. Um, I talked about it earlier in the year. I said if it comes down to it at the end of the year, if you have to pick... I'm picking Russell Wilson if we're looking at Russell Wilson beat Carroll. The way that the end of the season's gone, I highly doubt we're looking at either of those two guys leaving. It just it's just seemed like it. I mean, they've both talked up talked up their chemistry. They've looked at it on the field. I mean, I know after Russell's uh, rushing touchdown this this game, he was really pumped up and he went and basically embraced Pete. It, it doesn't look like we're going to lose any of those guys. I mean, do you think either that's I don't think either that either of those guys are going to leave the organization? Given last night's game and how well they did against Arizona, who held a top spot in their conference for most of the year, um, I don't think that their banging on the wall season was due to coaching or Russell Wilson, um, other than, of course, the unfortunate injury to Russell's finger. So I don't foresee either of those guys going anywhere. Yeah, and it would, I don't think at this point it would make sense to do that. It's just about holding everybody accountable and making sure that the issues that this team have are addressed. Cause you can't, as I've said that you can't just keep putting a bandaid, you know, on these holes in the, in the boat, just not going to work. Um, as we look to league news here, just some sort of minor things on uh, January the 5th, NFL teams could be docked draft picks and, or be fined heavily for unprofessional behavior during interviews at the NFL draft. And the infamous Wonderlick test has been scrapped. Uh, on the 6th of January, the Washington football team announced that they will have a new name. It will come out on February 2nd, and they've already teased their new uniforms on social media. Uh, also announced on the 6th, there will be no capacity limit at this year's Super Bowl. The Los Angeles County officials do not plan to limit the big game's attendance despite COVID-19 infection rates rising uh, amid the Omicron variant outbreak. Uh, a lot of sad Dallas fans out there then that were really hoping to bring yeah, the Super uh, Bowl there. It was announced that uh, AT&T Stadium would be a sort of backup, and AT&T Stadium will get more Super Bowls. I mean, that does look like a crown jewel, so they'll get it. But, yeah, kind of interesting to see that's like, hey, you guys are going to be a backup. And I don't <laughs> unless, unless something happens between now and then, I think they'd have to announce it around now, right, You yeah. know, early or early playoffs because that's a big deal. I mean, when – Cities know they have a Super Bowl that is a big event. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't imagine it'll move. Uh, and then January 9th is Black Monday. If you don't know what that is, is a, when a bunch of coaches get fired around the NFL. We've already had three of them be announced. Uh, the Vikings fired Mike Zimmer. The Bears fired Matt Nagy. And Miami fires Brian Flores, which is the most surprising news of the day, as Brian Flores has probably been the best coach of the bunch. Um, so that is something 
interesting to see around the league as uh, things are starting to change. And at least at this point, 134, Pete Carroll is still a Seahawk. So <laughs> um, as we look to the record here, the Seahawks finished the season out with a 7-10 and 10 record, fourth in the NFC West. We'll have a season recap coming for you this upcoming week. Uh, no real Mariners news as we continue the MLB lockout. The only thing that's really of note uh, is the potential hope for the end of a lockout is on the way, maybe, as, as I mentioned, potential. Uh, the league and the MLB Players Association are likely to restart co collective bargaining agreement negotiations in the near future, whatever that means. That could be the next few days, the next few weeks. Uh, the league is reportedly preparing new economic proposals to send to the players. The one thing I want to say about that is the only time lockouts ever really end is when we get towards when money might be affected. So we might see that as we approach spring training here, you know, the league or the players don't want to mess with, you know, losing out on money. Um, so we might see that end soon. Pitchers and catchers are supposed to report in early February, uh, but we are getting close to the middle of the month here and we're still in this lockout. So here's hoping that ends. Uh, and then a small note, uh, in league notes as well, the first uh, minor league manager, uh, first female minor league manager in baseball will start her time next season. Rachel Balkovec will serve as the manager for the Yankees low A affiliate in Tampa next season. So breaking through some barriers there as we head over to our Seattle Sounders news. Uh, the Sounders reportedly, this is a rumor now, uh, signed Albert Rusnak to a deal through 2023 with an option for 2024. That has not been officially announced by the Sounders yet, but I've seen multiple sources confirm that. It is there's still reportedly some steps coming for that contract to be finalized. An official announcement is supposed to be coming soon. Bell and I talked about it a little bit uh, before we started here. It's Monday, and that was supposed to be officially announced today, but we'll see about that. You know, free agency is such a wild place, especially in the MLS where you don't hear about it as much. Um, so reportedly signed Rusnak to a deal through 2023 with an option for 2024. It's a, I believe you mentioned it's a TAM deal, supposed to be a TAM deal. Yeah, supposed to be a TAM level contract um, that would require him to take a pay cut of 700000 So, you know, I know a lot of players that have come through here have said there's nothing like Seattle. So that would be a big vote of confidence to say, hey, I'm going to take a cut of nearing a million dollars to come and play for you guys after, you know, probably could get a good contract back with your all salt Lake. Uh, but again, not technically official yet. Uh, have had several sources say that a deal is in place, uh, but we're waiting for the dotted line to be signed and all that good stuff. Uh, and then the only really thing important to note in league notes is that the MLS super draft is on Tuesday, the 11th at 3 PM Eastern time, noon Pacific time. Uh, the Sounders hold the 20th pick in the draft and reportedly look at a few different Huskies that are going to be in the draft, including Charlie Ostrom. Uh, so that'll be interesting to note, and we'll uh, update you on who Seattle takes in that draft. As we head over to Seattle Storm News, probably uh, the coolest news of the past week. Sue Bird announces that she will return for her 19th season. The 12-time WNBA All-Star four-time champion announced on Instagram on January 7th that she will return to play next season. Uh, that's a big deal. That's kind of the first domino, hopefully, for the Storm, right? I mean, obviously, you look at it, the big three all are without a contract right now, and Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, Jewel Lloyd. That's the first domino. Um, I want to hear your thoughts on it uh, before I mention it, but I feel like that's it's sort of a big deal, and it maybe will persuade some people. It definitely sweetens the deal, and hopefully that means that Brianna Stewart doesn't go anywhere. I know that Lloyd mentioned that she would be exploring her options, talking to some family, making sure that it's the right decision for her, but it's a 19-year veteran. Um, Sue Bird has a lot of knowledge to give, and I think that anyone would love to work under her to really try to fill that role once she does retire. And, yeah, to really... I mean, yeah, you think about 19 years, somebody's won four titles, five gold medals, kind of invaluable. Um, and I know that Stewie said she wants to be back and, and, you know, having Sue would be a big deal. So there's the first domino. But like you like you talked about, really what we're looking at here is Jewel Lloyd, who had, a, I'd say, a, perhaps a breakout season. Uh, I think she was all pro this year, uh, all WNBA. I think mm -hmm. we use different terminology, different sports. All in WNBA, um, I would say probably had her best year. 
Uh, and like you said, she's going to look at her options. I know that not, not to freak out about small things, but on her Instagram, she posted a reposted a post about buying a new con buying a new house with a realtor. Oh, and then in the back, there are the words that spell out the letters that spell Chicago. Oh, so that's never a good don't, sign. Don't wanna, <laughs> I know that she's from, starts. she's from over there. I know she's from Chicago. It could just be a second home over back home, but. That's Nothing where, official, just a little that's scary. That's where the stirring the pot definitely begins. Yes. Um, I think that's where it began with LeBron, too, from his move to Cleveland to LA. So yeah. hoping for good news. <laughs> so we'll see about that, and we'll, we'll hear more about it as we look at league notes here. Important dates for free agency are coming up. The WNBA teams can start to contract, excuse me, start negotiating contracts on January 15th. So that's five days from now. Sure, we'll hear more about that soon. I'm sure Brianna Stewart will get that super max uh, that she's eligible for. Uh, February 1st is when players can sign those contracts. Uh, so, yeah, as we mentioned, Seattle looking to bring back Brianna Stewart, Drew Lloyd, Jordan Canada, amongst others. Only mm -hmm. having three to four players on their current roster is a little bit of an issue because you've got you know to fill out the your starters, got to bring back Stewie, and I would hope Jewel, um, and then a bench. So, you know, we'll <laughs> see about that. Uh, so upcoming for the storm is free agency. We don't really have much outside of that. And I don't believe, well, we've got the schedule already announced. Uh, so preseason's here in a few months, but in the near future, free agency is what we have to keep the eye on. As we move over to the Kraken here, we don't have any direct news for you as the Kraken had a full week of practices over the past week. And their next game is tonight. So can't really get that to you. Uh, they play tonight uh, in Colorado against the Avalanche. Uh, but we do have some key news about the team itself. In terms of injury-related news, center Jaden Schwartz is out four to six weeks. Uh, the Kraken have lost two of their top six scores in the past two weeks. Uh, he will at least miss a month after having hand surgery. Previously, his injury was designated as upper body. That's technically not wrong, but <laughs> hockey injuries are so vague. It's like either you have an upper body injury or you have a lower body injury, and then they don't go any detail about anything else. Uh, Schwartz was second on the team in points and is tied for the team lead in assists. So... Obviously, you look at that value, that's going to be tough to lose for a while, uh, especially on a team that's already kind of struggling and has struggled for a while to score points. Um, so that's a big deal. But you hope with the long week of practices that they had, you know, I, I know that in the press conferences after practice, head coach Dave Haxall was saying that we really need to have good, intense practices, ones that you wouldn't normally get midseason, uh, you know, getting a week off effectively from games. Uh, so you just hope that everything that they're working on, everything that they were doing, uh, someone who's there, you know, you hope all that stuff is actually going to, we're going to see that result in games. Because, you know, everybody wants to put the expectations on this team, but it's so hard to do that when it's an expansion team, guys are getting to know each other, you're dealing with a pandemic still, mm -hmm. uh, and then injuries always come into factor as well. So... I don't really have anything else for you outside of that. We look into the upcoming schedule for the Kraken uh, tonight, playing the Avalanche. Uh, the only interesting thing I'll note about the Avalanche is that Philip Grubauer, who played with the Avalanche previously, uh, has been wearing his Avalanche pads. So I don't know. Maybe that's a, a superstition thing. Maybe it switches up his luck. We'll see. Uh, January 12th, the team will travel to Dallas to play the Stars with a 5.30 p.m. puck drop. That is the first time they will play Dallas. Uh, January 13th, the next day at St. Louis against the Blues with a 5 p.m. puck drop. And then coming back home on the 15th to play the L.A. Kings with a 7 p.m. puck drop. So uh, a three-game road trip after being home for what feels like a month. Um, the team will look to really get back on track after a long week of practice uh, and hoping that, you know, somebody will be able to step up in Jaden Schwartz's absence. So... Uh, no rain news. Uh, they've been relatively quiet as we prepare for preseason next month. Uh, but outside of that, uh, it's kind of an interesting week. I mean, Seahawks take care of the Cardinals. Season ends. We'll have a season recap next week. Mariners still in the MLB lockout. Sounders reportedly sign Albert Rusnak to a deal through 2023 with an option for 2024. Not uh, officially confirmed yet. The Storm gets Sue Bird back uh, for next season and are looking at some important free agency dates upcoming mm -hmm. this month. And then the Kraken get an off week effectively with practices and look for their next few games on the road. Um, how are you looking at things? Obviously, it's going to be a little bit weird now with the Kraken being the only team playing during the year. But, uh, I mean, 
I'd have to think we have some positive outlooks. I mean, the Mariners have some positive outlook after overperforming expectations last season, signing, you know, the AL Cy Young and Robbie Ray. Uh, the Seahawks, I would say they've got somewhat of a decent future. I mean, they've got a good amount of cap space. It looks like Russell Wilson P. Carroll will be back. Uh, and it just looks like you just have to really address some things. The Storm, until we look at free agents, I can't tell you because you've only yeah. got three to four players on the roster. The Sounders have made the playoffs every year since inception and looking to add an all-star to their roster, which is going to be a big deal because Sounders are a juggernaut every year in the Kraken. Kind of dealing with things. So how did how did the first, uh, first episode go for you? I'm remaining optimistic. Um, I know that we've talked about a lot of injuries today, and I just hope that our teams can make the moves needed so that they're contenders again. And I don't think that we have to worry much about the Seattle Storm. Um, I think we take them for granted a little bit, but <laughs> hoping for the big three to come back for sure. Yeah, and oh, yeah, I mean, that's part of the reason I love having all these teams on here is because, I mean, what? I think we mentioned it. Storm have won four titles. It's the most of any team in this uh, in the city, and I thought the most among the major sports combined. You know, Seahawks won title, mm -hmm. the Sounders two MLS Cups. So there's three. Storm have four. So uh, <laughs> with that being said, this has been your week in sports, uh, circling shell sports on Converge. Uh, Charles, along with Bell here, uh, might see Bell next week. We'll have to see about that. Hope um, so. But. Until then, hopefully we get some more stuff for you as it kind of felt a little bit dry today. But like and we, like slow. you said, a lot of injuries. So <laughs> hoping for a turn of the tide next week. As always, thank your directors. Salman, as always, <laughs> doing his thing behind the camera, getting everything set up, making us look pretty. Uh, until we see you next week, thankfully all that ice and snow is gone. Uh, be safe out there if you will. We're back to our Seattle. Oh, I almost said Seattle storm. We're back to our <laughs> Seattle weather, our Seattle rain. Until then, take care. Be well. See you next week.